Happy Tuesday, everyone. This is Eric, and thank you once again for joining me here in the card closet. You know, it's been a long time since I've done a mail video. And, in fact, it's been so long that this whole stack here, uh, I've not shown on video before. But rather than doing a 30-minute video, I'm going to kind of break my recent editions into themes. So tonight, I'm going to show you my recent pre-war pickups. And then I will show you a custom one of one that a fellow YouTuber friend made for me. So, let's begin. Let's start with somebody I've mentioned before in an old video, Mo Berg. He is the catcher who was a spy, if you've read that book. I did a video where I talked a lot about him and some of his World War II stories as a spy. But this is a 1936 Gaudi Fine Pen Premium of Mo Berg. His popularity as a spy has really made his cards expensive. And he didn't have much of a career as far as statistics or anything like that goes. But uh, he has, he's in high demand because of his... Uh, war stories, so to speak. So took me a while to land that one from 1936 and uh, glad to finally have that one in the collection. Next up we've got a 1939, or I'm sorry, 1929 30 exhibits. These are called foreign ones. And these are oversized, as you can see, you know, compared to a, to a regular size card. Actually, all these, none of these are going to be the size of a regular size card from this era. But the main guy on this one is the guy in the lower left, Hall of Famer Red Ruffing. He wasn't that effective when he was with the Red Sox early in his career, but he got moved over to the Yankees after about half a dozen years with the Red Sox and he took off and had a Hall of Fame career. So that is Red Ruffing. I generally like to get cards of players from this era that where they're alone on the card, but several of these guys, the only way to get them on a card this year is to get this foreign one. So happy to add that as well. Now let's go through a bunch of exhibits. So this one, I believe, is a 1928 exhibits of Fred Hoffman. A uh, big shout out to our friends Bill and Tammy. We were out, it's probably been a good month ago now, we were out for dinner tonight on a weekend. We were at Texas Roadhouse, actually. And uh, this auction came up for bid right in the middle of our meal, so I kind of had to... Uh, bid right in the middle of eating with them and uh, it's just the four of us two couples and Bill follows my channel so hi Bill and uh, so he knew what I was doing and I ended up winning the auction this one uh, not in good shape it does have uh, some spelling corrections that somebody made on the name down there and the the way it was listed was Hoff space man on eBay so that eluded most people, and I think I ended up getting this for $15, which for this era is a real good price. Now, you get what you pay for. It has writing on it. But for me, that adds character from this era. I don't mind that at all. So that's Fred Hoffman from Exhibits. Another Exhibits that I've picked up is Ira Flagstead. And I believe this is from 1925. I'll do a video sometime to explain how to tell these apart, but a lot of it has to do with the format of the name and team down there. 
And so then with some of them, they have different colored tints for different years as well. Uh, but I believe this one with the square box like that is 1925. A couple more that I just bought, just came in the other day, also from 1925, uh, Jack Quinn. Bought these, this one and the next one I bought from a gentleman off of eBay who happens to also be in South Dakota, so that was kind of cool. Got to be careful with these ungraded ones. Um, I learned from Brent at Near Mint Musings, who I texted back and forth about this purchase, learned from him that the color on the back uh, gives it away, whether it's a fake or not. And this one with a beige cream colored back is almost guaranteed to be legit. Plus, I took pictures of it under a loop and sent them to Brent. And uh, we're saying it's legit. So when Mr. Loop says it's good, then I say it's good too. So glad to pick this one up even in raw form. Got it probably for a better deal because of the fact that it was raw. And then the other one that I got from that same guy is uh, Bill Wamgans. 1925 as well. So I've got maybe two or three to go yet now from 1925. And then I'll be have the full team. Uh, next up is probably the best one, especially as far as uh, value goes. Even in even in this condition, this is by far the most valuable one here. This is a 1937 Opeachy of Lefty Grove, and it is the it's the Heads Up series that came out from. Um, other com another company <laughs> escapes me at the moment, and uh, the Canadian version was came out a year later, and so you can see that it's got the French batter up. That's the that's the name of the brand, which was a gum company. So Lefty Grove, uh, this one, uh, you know, being raw, I was suspicious about it. Um, had a conversation with the seller before I bid on it. Ended up getting it um, the the lowest buy it now for this card raw was about four hundred dollars more than I paid for this one, so I took the chance, compared it under the loop with the ones I already have, and it is legit. And then I've got this one, which is a graded one that just came in yesterday. 1911 Sporting Life of Harry Lord with the blue background. So the story behind this one, I tried to get this one a few months back and I I bid $93 on it and I was outbid. Um, the guy who won the auction, who shall remain nameless, and now it wasn't this specific example, but it was another example of this card. He turned around and he's got it on eBay now, the very same card. Um, he actually had it later that day relisted um, uh, for $225 and he paid, I think it was $94 for it. Um, so just to be kind of, oh, I don't know, a little ornery. <laughs> After he listed it, I knew he didn't have it yet because he had just won it earlier that day like over me. And then he relisted it with the old pictures, the previous seller's pictures. But uh, he had it for 225 so I offered him 93 and I said, I see this one is selling in the mid-90s based on re recent sales. <laughs> yeah, he just flat out declined it. He probably knew I was being a smart aleck. But anyway, I really like these Sporting Lifes with the profile picture, kind of similar to a T206. These are the M6, M116s. And with Harry Lord... I did not have a 1911 card yet of Harry Lord. And then finally, I want to show you this custom one of one card that was made for me by the one and only Bud Stoney. He makes custom cards. He makes, he's made some really cool ones. 
This one here means more to me than all those that I've shown put together just because a friend took the time to make this for me, had me in mind, just the, the delicate cutting he had to do to piece this together from parts of other cards and stickers to make this custom for me. So shout out to Bud Stoney. This is a custom Bud Stoney one of one, as he calls them. You can commission him to make you a custom one of one of any player you like. And if he doesn't have any cards of that player, you just send him cards of that player that you want incorporated into the design, and he will do this for you. So I need to pay him yet for this. I'll do that quick here, bud. So the one and only Bud Stoney, go check out his channel. And I did own the card that he used as the centerpiece. So he basically used this uh, 1997 Stadium Club of Aaron Seeley. My favorite player, the guy I PC the most. And he put it over the top of a Fleer Red Sox sticker. I had told him I just wanted it to be really shiny. And then he took that number one draft pick, picked that off of a card. There are no Aaron Seeley cards that exist that have that. So I'm not sure whose card he took that off of, but then he's got the 86, 87 Fleer basketball border there. So very cool. I can't thank Bud enough for that. That is really special. It's going to have a special spot in my collection for sure. So that's all I've got for you tonight, everybody. Hope you're having a great week. It's only Tuesday. we got a few days to go yet. And uh, I've been enjoy enjoying those of you that have been doing videos from the National. I've been watching as many of those as I can. So if you haven't been doing National videos, I'm probably a little behind on your channel. But I know that a couple people that are regular commenters here, shout out to Picker Jim S. He's got some good content from the National. Pepino Man shows up around here every now and then. So does Baseball Collector. Shout out to those guys. They've got some great video content as well. So I'd highly recommend you go check them out. And uh, just want to wish you all a blessed week. Thanks for watching again tonight, folks. And this is Eric checking out of the card closet. Take care. Bye.